um, with lots of books and also colouring and stuff. And we found um, a um, book, an interesting book, um, which I thought was quite interesting. And it's basically an entire book just full of short, little tiny facts. And um, here are some of the some of the, the first couple that I found, first few that I found. Um, apparently. Um, so hold on, are you now doing a section of the show called "Did You Know"? Yeah. Andy reads from the book. Yep. So did you know? Um, first of all, uh, bees apparently they can fly higher than my, Mount Everest. I mean, don't know why, but they can. And who checked it? And how do they get the bee to check? Like, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Well, any of the loads of people who are at the top end of Mount Everest go, oh, look, there's a bee, therefore. Yeah, but, but what was the bee doing? Like, <laughs> I tell you what, this, this book must be flying off the shelves. W.H. Smith's financial <laughs> worries are now over. The book flew Next. off the shelves as well. Yeah, but, but before we go into these facts, I'm going to read them out, and then I want to talk about them in terms of why. Because bees don't make honey at 25,000 feet or whatever it is, 13,000 feet. Um, like... <laughs> They can, doesn't mean they do. Yes, but but how did you get them on a string to go up there to check? Seriously, think about it. Like you can't just you can't just make a bee do that. Well, I've already explained it. You know that bees can fly higher than Mount Everest when you're standing on the top of the Mount Everest and a fucking bee flies past. It's like, what was it doing there? Flying. Uh, Potrack, this book doesn't go into much much detail. I'm afraid. Yeah, Ray Fiennes might have got stung at the top. Quite right, Ali. I mean, there's only one of a number of perfectly ordinary exponents. Next, let's have another fact. Right. I've that one. Another it's one. Um, apparently, no one in the entirety of the UK ever dies of natural causes. Um, everyone dies of something other than natural causes. Um, that's weird. Um, here's one for you, Zunk. Um, penguins... Can't Sorry, hang on. I'm just, I'm just. Hold on. I'm banging my head on the table at the moment. I'll <laughs> let you know when I've stopped. Okay. This one. I like this one. Um, apparently, penguins can't actually taste fish. Um, so uh, I'm gonna have to obviously just give them a bit of chicken and tuna pizza. Um, and and this is one for you, uh, geographiles out there. Um, the Republic of Ireland you can't didn't just actually invent new words. <laughs> oh, you can. Um, apparently... Geographers. Geographers. Yeah. Um, Education is just something that happened to other people for you, isn't it? Yeah, I went. It was interesting. Um, the Republic of Ireland didn't actually have postcodes until, until 2015. Um, so Everybody I knows that. If you worked no. in anything near logistics, you'd know that. In fact, Dublin had postcodes from significantly before that. But the rest mm -hmm. of the Republic of Ireland didn't. But Dublin had postcodes. This is rubbish, this book. What's it called? Who wrote this? Um, here's one. Um, in New York City, what? someone gets stabbed every 54 seconds. <laughs> it then says in brackets, poor bloke. <laughs> well, that'd be a bit of a relief after wandering around London for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Oh, that's very good. Uh huh. <laughs> you enjoying yourself so much you forgot to press push to talk, so I can't hear A little anymore. bit, yeah. A little bit. Um, apparently, to flirt, it's a blessing, Haddock's home. Really. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, uh, please excuse me. I'm going to turn the stream off now. I think I'm just going to sit and read my book. You know, it, isn't it? It's like when you give a, ki a chimpanzee like a slinky. It just sits in the corner, fascinated for hours on end, doesn't it? It really. Oh. Do you remember that that first time that you got a doorbell and you you just pressed it and then ran inside to see if it still ring? And then... oh, I worry about you. Was this in your file at work? What then? Hilariously funny. No. No, educationally subnormal and should be supervised at all times. Do not allow exposure to sharp ob objects. 
You know when so, Blue Pete were talking about using roundy edge scissors? They had, it's you. That's who they had in mind. They were just thinking about Mrs. Davo, you know, suing them for leading you astray into dangerous situations. No. <laughs> that has got to be some of the worst facts ever. And the, the, is this a big book? You've not actually lifted it up. Is, is it more of a pamphlet? It's a really good book. Well, I mean, if it was a big book, at least you could use it for something useful like, I don't know, propping up a wobbly table leg or something like that. Or one of those things that they call, um, you know, toilet reading. That, you know, you run out of loo roll and you go, oh, thank God for that. I've got this. Whoa. I'm gonna have to make. Would you like some more? I'm, I'm no. Chat. No, would you? you will chat. you do more of that whilst I go and make a cup of tea? Right, and you I'll do pretend that. it didn't happen. Chat. Would you? <clears throat> would you like some more interesting facts? <laughs> <laughs> I think the yeses have it at the moment. Hang on. I'm gonna go with yes. There's a lot of you. All right. More facts. Well. In that case, now, in my opponent's turn, there will be the Book of Fact. So. Oh, blimey. Who just cheered? Give us the facts, good sir. <laughs> well, Chubstep's just bought facts. Come on, Tirano. Finish him. Okay. Can we remove one, please? <laughs> Ali Ryder has now just upped the ante and bid 101 Four. to not you have know. fact. Don't give us facts. This is a dangerous game you're all playing here. Um, do we let Roust fall pick up the ball? I think we should. <laughs> fact check. We love facts. We all love fact. This is true. Oh, blimey. Right. Co cat comedy. Make a cup of tea. So the cat's there all kind of, oh, give us some of that milk. So I start pouring milk in the bowl. So he jumps down from the counter, immediately sticks his head in the bowl whilst I'm pouring it. Just the cat facts, milk, please. milk, back of head. Doesn't stop. <laughs> he's going to smell lovely after he's heated up for a bit, isn't he? Oh, well, lots of bits flying around. Thanks, folks. Yeah, they decided um, between them that they all wanted to have a little fact off. Um, where... Um, we cheered bits to decide whether or not we were or were not uh, going to declare fact. So um, I said that we would have fact in, in opponents' turns. Uh, it would appear that Chubstep has just outbid everyone, and we are now having fact. So, uh, Zonk, I will just... Um, He's taken a giant leap from his good senses. Chubstep, what the hell has happened? Have you had a blow to the head or some traumatic life incident? Thanks for the facts for the fact god. Why right. on my Twitch stream I've got that little blue crown that when I click it says prime subscription and loot reminder. 
I don't know. Um, it is one. This is not a fact, but it's quite entertaining. Uh, the scientist who analysed the plutonium for the first atomic bomb was called Mr. Doom. Dr. Doom? No, no, Mr. Doom. Who was it? Was it somebody at work who was talking about or somebody in the stream? I can't remember. It was a conversation over the last couple of days that they got a mate called Barry Fear or something like that. And it was like, is he a doctor? Because, like, you'd have to be, wouldn't you? If your surname was... It was P-H-E-A-R. -P I can't remember his first name. I'm not doxing him anyway, but you know what I mean. So your surname is Fear. You would knock yourself out to become a doctor, wouldn't you? Or at the very least uh, get a PhD. What an opportunity yeah. if you didn't. There are 17 types of ice, but only one exists outside the laboratory. Most of that's in my freezer. Hmm. I'm thinking of other jobs you could go and do. Um, I, I, I reckon, I was thinking about this the other day, and I reckon I could go and work in a warehouse. Um, that. Um, well, it's important to have goals and dreams, Andy, so good luck with that. Anyway. I know, the, the, a warehouse. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say this one with a straight face. Um, we could always work for, you could always work for Nando's, couldn't you? Um, You've got that vacant look uh, on your face when uh, you're at work, so you'd fit right in. Come on, let me finish my joke off. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, um, I can't remember it now. You've put me off. Oh, shit. Hang on. This is coming back. You're having the joke about the warehouse. The, the, the Edinburgh Festival beckons, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> uh, Andy, pay attention to the game before you lose again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She didn't go in the airport like Oh, Christ. He's down telling jokes. Um, yeah, but most of my jokes are actually really funny. No. Do you remember Saturday Night Telly in the 1970s? Even that, you I don't think you'd make it even onto that. You know, where the competition was Bernard Manning and Jim Davison. Oh, I don't Morgan. know. Morgan, thank you for the 100 bits, but... Please, My jokes are really funny. Him. Is the single most terrifying sentence you could have well. said there? Phil, bloody hell, Phil! Oh my word! For a fact, every minute. Oh, hang on a second. puts puts the game on pause. Hang on. For fact, a every minute. It's a cheer off. We're just saying the day that cheers seem to have sort of you know, nobody doing it that more. Now, now we're inundated. Yeah. Ladies no and facts gentlemen, your generosity is exceeded only you by win. your great beauty. Thank you very much. Oh my word! Uh, film goers eat 55% more popcorn watching a sad film than a comedy. There you go. Right, I've got a minute and a half to turn my turn. Can't be right because when you go to the cinema and you buy the family super mega bucket of popcorn. Do you ever leave any, ir ir um, regardless of what film you're watching? Oh, not normally. So, it's equal. You just eat all of it. Hey, I didn't write this book. I just have to agree with it. Well, I think anyone ever did probably gone into hiding. They should. What sort of hiding? Well, the sort of hiding, you know, like Salman Rushdie. I wrote something, it wasn't very popular, I think I'll keep my head down for a bit. That kind of hiding. Go on, Nemke. Finish him. Shit. Uh-oh. Have another go. It'll be fine. Mm. Can you get full eating popcorn? I don't think I've ever got full eating popcorn. Sick of eating popcorn. That happens. But never, I don't remember ever going, gosh, I'm stuffed. I do quite like popcorn, though. Do you have... Um, what do you what do you think, folks? Salt or um, sugary for popcorn? 
Well, these days, some people mix it up, don't they? Bit of both. Do they? Morgan likes salty, salty and buttery. Dr. Nix likes both. Baz salty. Chubstep just has no truck with popcorn whatsoever. Faze is asking, has Nemke the, the Yeti ever done anything useful in his life ever? No. Can't remember the last time. I'm with Geeks here. I'm, I'd go sweet popcorn. Burkist, it's, it's too sticky and sugary, and after a bit of that, I feel a bit, a bit sort of mm. a bit sick. Not nauseous sick, but, but kind of over my throat. Well, no. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. Tell you what I do like at the cinema, which is probably not not on the cards at the moment, is um, nachos and crappy cheese sauce and a load of jalapenos. That's good. I mean, Boobies and Butler were pretty much on the money when they declared that nachos rule. Because let's face it, they do. And I don't mean Doritos. I mean nachos. Mm. Right, back to the facts. We've had a lot of cheers for facts. Hang on, just got a word from accounts. They say, let him continue saying facts. Fine. Oh my god, this is an interesting one. 10% of all the water in ancient Rome went to the emperor. I don't know what he did with it, but that's an awful lot of water. Uh, the Roman Empire was also only the 17th biggest empire in history. Well, you've got the British Empire, of course. Hang on. Let's have a look. Which of the biggest empires ever? Oh, we are. Here's one. Since this is a male-only channel, pretty much, um, apparently, at times of peak fertility, uh, women's voices are higher pitched. So, you know when they're wanting to get it on, because they'll talk like this. Well, no. Fertility and wanting to get it on are two different things. Here we go. Right, here we go. Biggest empire ever? Yep. Oh, yes. God bless Queen Victoria. Followed by the Mongols. So that's, uh, yeah, lovely. Genghis there and the lads. The Russians, Russian Empire. Then we have the Queen Dynasty. Less than half the size of the British Empire. Then Spain rocks in at number six. Five, sorry. Um, then France. Then the Umayyad Caliphate. Umayyad Caliphate. Ah, uh, I know. I don't know exactly where that is, but I can. Um... Well, it's going to be the Middle East, isn't it? Well, yeah. yes, it is. Yeah, it's it's the southern, the southern shores of the Mediterranean, Iran, Iraq, Turkey. That right? Okay. Then the Yung Yung Dynasty, which is sort of eastern China, the Xiongu Empire, Brazilian Empire. I did not know they had one. The only time Brazilians ever had an empire in my head uh, was when I was playing Civilization V. Yep, the Roman Empire, at its peak, covered um, 5 million square kilometres. The British Empire, 35 and a half. So the British Empire is seven times bigger than the Roman Empire. Ah, suck that, Romans. That's about, that's about it for all the interesting ones. Right, um, I think we should be able to surf this chorf that's on the edge here. Um, he is only three squares from the edge, um, so uh, we'll just give this a quick whirl, see what, I can, see what happens. Rouse says, why the cheering spree? I don't know, Rouse, I honestly don't, but with cheers, what you do is just sit back and let them roll you, you don't question it just go thanks so thanks folks so there we go we've moved him in, into position you see now Phil's got some interesting facts 95% of the spiders in your house have never been outside uh, why That's interesting why though well, because they were born in your house and then they stay in your house and then get eaten by the cat in your house that's pretty much what happens around here Do spiders really crawl into your mouth when you're asleep? I don't Sorry. remember ever waking up and going, Pleh, oh no, a spider. I think they probably wouldn't. 
finish him! Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with Kiramasaka. They, they don't do that. It's complete nonsense. I don't know. Oh, no. Black Ducky. My, my cats both used to eat spiders. If, if they moved, if the spider just sat still, wouldn't really notice. But if they moved, it was... Whoa, get it. Oh, got that's it. a big one. Got one. I'll stay out as well. Oh, blimey. No, that one's coming back. But it's not coming back. Dr. Nick says, is there anything Tuco won't eat? Um, vegetables? Never seen him eat vegetables. But no, apart from that, no. Carbohydrates, proteins of all kinds, anything that moves, basically. Ali says, cats evolved from the T-Rex. Not sure if that's factually strictly accurate, but <laughs> the anecdotal evidence is certainly overwhelming. Okay, fair play. Imagine if they did. I don't know. Two goes never seen one of those pizzas because nobody in their right minds around here, at least, would never order one. And he's never been to Andy's. He's not a big traveller. Uh, Tesla says we're just spinning at the same chores. Yes. Well, cheesecake being a broadly dairy product, um, he certainly he certainly likes cheese. I mean, really likes cheese. Um, they're, su they're supposed to be lactose intolerant, but they've never noticed that stopping him. Marzum, that is a very good fact. Cats prove that the earth cannot be flat because if it was, they would have pushed everything off by now. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, apparently, for 1.4 million years, there was no improvement in the design of stone-handed stone axes. That is bizarre, isn't it? For 1.4 million years, nobody had a better idea. Stone-handed axes. Mm -hmm. What sort of handles were made of stone? Well, I can think of an immediate improvement. Make make the blade bit out of stone and the handle out of wood. There you go. You can have that one for free. Well, yeah, quite. Tell you what, if I was around a thousand years ago and shut up before you even suggested <laughs> it, um, I'd, have, I'd have ruled the world, wouldn't I? I'd have gone, oh. hey, Lance, would, would you don't, like tell, to... don't tell anyone else, but here, I've come up with this new type of axe where we make the, the choppy bit made out of stone and the handles out of wood. And suddenly, all these, like, I don't know, hordes or whatever was wandering around a thousand years ago with their wooden axes on stone handles would just decimate them, wouldn't we? We'd just go through them like a hot axe through butter. Or well, they've not got butter at that stage, have they? Um, can I say a controversial one? It's mildly controversial. Is everyone ready for a little bit of mild controversy? Well, you, you, you're just trying to pronounce the word controversial. Yep. Go on, have a go. Controversial. Well, well, that was great. Okay. Now right. what should we talk about? Well, my, it's mild controversy. Is everyone ready? Because um, I feel as though I do need to pre pre prefix this one. Um, apparently, in 29 states in the US... You mean preface? Yeah, that, prefix. that, yeah. Okay. Um, that uh, in, 29, in 29 states in the US, it's still legal to fire someone uh, for being a homosexual. Luckily, it doesn't tell us which 29 states. Are you sure? I've... I, am I sure? As sure as I can be reading this book to you, Zunk. It's a very Sounds bizarre fact, isn't it? Sounds a bizarre. bit unreasonable. Sounds very unreasonable to me. Well, there's, there's lots of American um, viewers with us. So, no, yeah, Steve points out that's not actually true. It's illegal on a federal level. So there might, there might be some sort of crappy little bylaw in the, the middle of Hicksville or whatever but federally they'd go no 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 you can't do that we were talking about American politics on the way home on the radio it's a bit... Uh, we never talk about politics or religion. Phil says, 
Men spend almost a year of their lives staring at women, a survey found. <laughs> I think that's possibly, possibly going on the side of caution. <laughs> Is it worth trying to surf this line down blitzer? Um. Turns yeah. out the answer is yes. Yes, yes, it is. Arvac says, an altitude, uh, at altitude, the tolerance of airplane speed between stalling and damaging the engines can be as low as six knots. Wow. I'm sorry that Pseudonym wasn't here to share that fact, because that, that would be right up his street. Uh, it's not plain so much that Pseudo likes Ardvac, it's, it's flight. Um, did you know that the longest recorded flight of a chicken is 13 seconds? For example. I haven't seen Pseudo for an awfully long time, though. Do you think Ian Aratark have just, you know, enjoying the love that dare not speak its own name and that they've run off to start a new life in, um, in Texas, where they're both currently unemployed? For example, Could I? if I do say so myself, that was quite a good surf. I should really watch that, shouldn't I? Bass says it's yeah. legal in Los Angeles to marry a 12 year old girl if your church approves. Oh. Killjoy, no, come back. <laughs> At any one given time, 0.7% of the world is drunk. Wow. So 50 million people are drunk right now. Well, there's only about 20 million Scottish people, aren't they? So then you've got the Irish. So who, who are the other 10 million? It might be nice to join the 50 million, but as I've only got four bottles of Budweiser left, I don't think that's going to happen. I'll have a cup of tea instead. Yeah. Right, we need to give the ball to you. Did you know in Scotland, Iron Brew is the best-selling soft drink, eclipsing even Coca-Cola? Someone had told me that. I don't know why someone told me that. I don't know, maybe I know someone who might know that. Well, we talked about it at work. It's a good fact. It was one of the Scottish lads who was telling us, so I tend to believe him. Yeah, it's a sort of, sort of fact I believe. Baz, that depends what metric you're using. If, if you're talking net weight, probably not, but monetary wise maybe Arvac says do you know the UK is the money laundering capital of the world um, is it wow oh we were talking about it when we went for a curry you were there Andy oh, that baseball's that. gone Oh dear. Got one. Oh, oh dear. dear. Oh, oh dearie dear. Dearie dearie dear. What do you need to save the apple for that hobgoblin? Steepside forgets to take his cash out of his jeans before he washes them. Ah, now, question for you. If you wash one of those new five pound notes, do they survive the washing machine better? I'm thinking yes, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Nemke's making V signs to the crowd. Quite right, Nemke. Well done, son. Well, wasn't the housing market in London largely um, fucked by uh, money laundering by folks with dodgy cash buying properties? 
was not a big thing. Aardvac, that's that's witty and yet a little bit too risque in the in equal yeah, amounts. Yeah. Keep so up the good I work. Appreciate the joke. It's a bit, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit near the knuckle. That one might be. Oh, Max Smash is just resub. Thank you indeed, Max Smash. Wonderful to have you with us. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Apparently in Denmark, Kuramasako says, um, there is an old law which is still in effect that says every Dane is entitled to beat any Swedish man with a stick if the Swedish man comes walking across a frozen Uresund. Well, okay, so what we take from that, advice for Swedish chaps, if you are out walking and stumble across an Uresund, go round. <sighs> Bob Face says watch out for dodgy hedge funds. These are particularly unsuccessful investments where you throw money at, at, in a pooled unit linked arrangement and buy up toperies or. Humans are the only species on earth to have sex face to face, says, oh my god, no way. Really? Yeah. Um, apparently, Mars is more accurately mapped than Alaska. I mean, I could fix that by just walking down to my freezer right now, couldn't I? Dunk, that's an ice cream joke. Oh, well done. Sorry, thanks for pointing that out. I wasn't sure. Ooh, blitz. Blots! It's a blots! It's Hang a on. blots! We've got an icon for that. Now we dance in emote. The icon emote, yeah. Hold on, where's the chicken gone? We've lost the chicken. No. We have. Oh my God. Where's the chicken? And the tuna fish is gone. No. Is that all the room we've got for remotes these days? We've had to trim the chicken and the tuna. We have had to do oh, a bit of trimming, yeah. I, I've, I, Kira Masaka, yeah, I got, I got the message. Oresund is the strait of water between Denmark and Sweden. Right? Where's that lad who plays the mountain in Game of the Thrones from? You know, Hop, Thorn, Bjorn, Bloody Blue. Isn't he Swedish? Is he Swedish? Oh, he's Icelandic, is he? Fine. Hop, Thorn, Bjorn. Right, fine. Got it. Oh, all right then. What if, what if there you are, you know, sat on the Danish shoreline, eat, eat, eating your pickled herring or whatever, enjoying the afternoon, all half an hour of it, and then you see Dolph Lundgren <laughs> in his prime striding towards you. Do you a immediately reach for your stick, sounding the knowledge that the law is right behind you, or just wave politely and welcome him to Denmark? I do. Apparently, he's from Stanzo Lol. Is that a real place, Guyon? Stanzo Lol. Stanzo Lol. Good name for an elf, that, wasn't it? Stanzo Lol. <laughs> <sighs> well, yeah, but Kiran Masako, I mean, Dolph Lundgren, brackets in his prime, not the 61-year-old bloke he is now. I don't care how big your bloody stick is, you're not going to take a chance with that, are you? Don't you spark out. What is Danish for welcome to Denmark? Because that, that's what you need. Oh, that was unlucky, wasn't it? Velkommen til Denmark. Yeah, and and he's um, he man as well. Good good point, super dupe noob. Ten 
tennis for welcome to Denmark is have a Carlsberg. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is a promising kick. You are going that direction, aren't you? Just yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've done that before, declared it's going frightfully well, and then your opponent scores two squares from the end zone that I assumed was his. <laughs> Just goes to show that the position of the ball is crucial in Blood Bowl, isn't it? Because how a game's going can so often rest on where the ball is. <laughs> yeah. Bizarre, I, must, that. I must mention I must mention that to Gorkicidal tendencies. It'll revolutionise their current playbook. Canada's national animal is the beaver. You should, is it not the moose? I'd have said moose. Is it not moose? I stand I sit corrected. So I think you're sat down, right? Yeah. I sit corrected. My phone's just gone ping, but there's no alerts. Why? Why have you pinged? What you want? Oh, I've got a connection request on LinkedIn. Cracking. Marsham says Scotland national animal is a unicorn. Yep, yep, I knew that. Hence the lion and the unicorn and all that. Is he really? Mm -hmm. I feel like we've started a really good corner here. And he's fact corner. What else does it say about your file in, uh, on you in work? Um can sometimes be self-absorbed. This is quite a, uh, an in-depth analysis, isn't it? How, how did this happen? Who wrote this? Oh. I can be scathing. Yes, I can be, Flux Streamer, but mostly to myself. Does it make mention of your freakish height? Uh, no. Oh, now Morgan the Man makes a very good point. Um, that There's a large marsupial in Australia known as the drop bear, which resembles a larger koala, but with a padded bottom. It's carnivorous and attacks prey by dropping on them from above. <laughs> Well-known fact, Morgan. Yes, we, we all know about that. <laughs> That's lies, isn't it? No, it's completely true. That is a lot. No, that is a lie, though, isn't it? Well, watch out for the drop bears, mate. It's absolutely true. Drop bears. They're the biggest cause of tourist deaths in the whole an Antipodean um, continents. Nah, this is a lie. Uh, Kiran Masako says, Finland is the country with the most lakes inside its border in the entire world. Oh, it's an interesting fact. Oh. Chris Max says, you are, you are able, the human body is capable of drinking lava, but only once. <laughs> once, probably enough, isn't it? Yeah, drop bears killed Nicole Kidman, um, McNaughton points out. Along with, um, along with Rolf Harris's career. Oh no, that was interfering with kids. Sorry, got them confused there. Oh, Scottish fact: Scotland only has one lake. Does it? No. I'd never really thought about it, but yeah. What about all the locks? Is a lock not a lake? Pretty much the same thing, isn't it? 
And if it isn't, what's the difference? One hasn't got a lock on it. Locks are not lakes. All right, I'm 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 willing to entertain the possibility that locks and lakes are different. But what is the distinguishing um, characteristic that separates one from the other? <laughs> oh, T, that's frightfully witty. Read read T's comment, Andy. Three up, four up, five up. Locks usually have a key. Uh, what? A what? <laughs> He's scratching his head for ages trying to figure it out. <laughs> T, if I could reach, high five, mate. That's brilliant. For you non native English speakers out there, what he said is locks have a key. And key is spelled K, K E Y normally. What he's referred to is key as in the side next to some water, um, which is normally used for things like. Um, Harbour. Come on, I'm, I'm interested to under get your your understanding of the world. It's a scary and confusing place outside, isn't it? <laughs> that was really good too. That really was quite excellent. It's Zach. See you later, buddy. Nice having you aboard. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no, Dirty Tom's been knacked. Oh, he'll be all right. He'll 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 shake that off. He'll it'll buff out. No worries, oh. Pink. Oh, Pinkish. Well, you know, careful what you wish for, but good luck. Have fun, etc. Um, Chubstep says, Zunk, how do you pronounce fun. lock? Lock. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Nick says, Fjords are Norwegian cars. <laughs> Apparently, I pronounced, pronounced lock incorrectly. Lock. Is that better? Well, as you're just typing, this is going to be quite tough to figure out. Oh, loch. Like Fellaini. <laughs> well, they're not Dutch, are they? Loch. Loch. Heart attacks are more likely Loch. to happen on a Monday. <clears throat> yes, that's true. What if you work Sunday through Thursday like I do? Does that mean that effectively they're more likely to happen on a Sunday? i.e. today. I feel fine, by the way. Boldface says the longest word in the English language is 1,185 letters long. Come on, Bob. You, you've got me hooked. The punchline is... This one I don't understand. Ivan the Terrible once sewed an archbishop into a bearskin and had him hunted down, hunted down by a pack of dogs. Why would you hunt him into a bear, like sew him into a bearskin? So the dogs would chase him and it would be a bit of a laugh, be like chasing a bear. Mm. And plus he probably wouldn't fit inside the fox skin. Mm. Unless he was a very, very small bishop. He's just been a very naughty boy. Yeah, Pip Padden for Kittens point out it's because it was Ivan the Terrible and he was mad. So he didn't really think it through. Um, uh, explained it. 
Super says St. Lucia is the only country in the world named after a woman. Um, Well, based on them two twins called Mayhem and Chaos, you, you could have a kid called Australia, and then that would be another one named after it. Oh, no, it's the other way around, isn't it? Oh, never mind, that doesn't count. Um, Marsum says there's two Thailands. Is there? What, like North Thailand and South Thailand, for example? Do tell more. That's interesting. Gurian says the average American woman weighs as much as a man from the 1960s. Oh. £166, quite a lot, isn't it, for a for a girl? What's that in stone? That's what? Twelve stone? <laughs> Hi. I eat some food. I'm hungry. Tea? I think I heard that somewhere else before, though. I'm a bit worried that I remembered it. Please somebody drop that. Hey! Yeah. I don't like these ones. Do you want another one? Oh, oh, eagle, eagle. <laughs> very good, Marzen. Oh, how very strange. That's like Killjoy's joke that you need to know a lot about Eastern Europe to really get it. And South Southeast Asia. Was it from the same joke book, perhaps, that Killjoy... Mm, interesting working theory. 7% of Americans believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> no, they don't. Really? How now, brown cow? Well, he did just roll what? Five up, four up. Um, to, to score. Oh, three up, five up, four up. Um. And he had a three-up dodge as well. In Utah, it's illegal not to drink milk. What if you're lactose intolerant, though, kittens? You know, and it, and it was one of them really severe instances of lactose intolerant. You'd, what, will you die? Well, you'd, you'd be on the toilet for a lot, wouldn't you? Oh, we're doing some good work with the palindromes here. Nice one, gentlemen. Isn't, um, aren't the salt lakes in Utah where they break all the land speed records? Canada has a town called Dildo. There's a South Dildo in a Dildo Island. Wow! Never been to Utah. What's it like? Good question. Uh, so I could get him through there. I need to put two pieces. All I need is only two players just to mark this chorf. There's one. And you're the other. Helgen, you are not from Utah. Stop jumping on the bandwagon just because it's fashionable. Be your own man. Come huh? on now. Is he from? Is Helgen from Utah? No. 
claiming to be from you two. I'm just because you saw True Blue do it and thought that looks really good. I want to. I want to say that as well. Yeah. I don't really know, know True Blue. I'm, I'm quite. Ali, you're not from Utah. Oh, God. <laughs> Nor are you Spartacus. Stop it. <laughs> no, I'm Spartacus. I think you're pronouncing that wrong. What what's what elements of the, the culture do you think would rankle true blue? I've been to a few bits of the United States and I had a pretty good time in all of them. Oh, fucking twat. There's a, t there's a town in Denmark called Tom, which translates as intestines. We'd have our job selling new houses on the development there, you know, move to intestines. Well, that would be what would be called a bowel movement. Hey! Thank you, too. Thank you. Tell you where else I went that was very nice. Italy's nice. I like Italy very much. Yeah, they Food's some excellent. Quite nice pizzas. Well, it's not just pizzas, but um, if the food is excellent. Makes some of the finest motor cars in the world. Um, very attractive people. Just genetically tick. Well done. Um, coffee's good. Nice bit of architecture. Hohans lives five kilometres from Tarn in Denmark, which translates as intestines. Do they call the northern sector upper and <laughs> southern sector lower by any chance? I can believe that, Helgen. Yeah, I believe that. Italy's ranked top three in tourist satisfaction travel destinations each year. Portugal's very nice, but no, it, Italy, very good. Very good, isn't it? Yeah, Portugal's good. Most of it's on fire, though. Only a bit of it's on fire right now. But it's very nice, Portugal. Ah, some top advice from the uh, government of Canada um, advising not to travel to South Sudan. So, folks, if any of you are planning a trip to South Sudan, uh, don't go, eh? Michael Juncker shares with us the immortal phrase, Du kan ringe fra ringsted ti tisted men kan du ikke tis fra tisted ti ringsted which means that you can call from calling city to p city but not the other wound not the other way round i can see how that caught on there thank you mickle that was very good chubstep goes oh shit that's the holiday plans ruined ah chubstep top tip and this can be from the travel corner of the show top tip here that half the fun of the holidays planning it so save money by planning too but don't actually go anywhere bishop basher lives near upper dicker <laughs> i've got to act bishop basher is upper dicker somewhere in southern england because there are some slightly dodgy named villages lurking around there J.K. Simmons has been the voice of the Yellow Peanut M&M since the late 1990s. J.K. Simmons, I should know who he is. Was he a wrestler or was he in Kiss? That's Gene Simmons I'm thinking of.
Oh, top top advice for you from oh my god no way, Andy. On average, twelve newborns a year are given to the wrong parents. Um, so really, why? When Megatron pops out, draw her a bit so you can identify her later. Ali says that a town in Scotland called Battle Dykes, which would make an incredible TV show, though possibly a bit politically incorrect. <sighs> Who can argue with that, Ali? I mean, there'd be tuning. I mean, we're not just talking Channel Four here. But that would that would be Sky Sports, wouldn't it? Anyway, moving quickly on. Marzum says, "Zunk, what's wrong with Cockermouth?" Don't know, Marzum. Never been. Didn't fancy it. Mike Norton says, don't worry, Andy will be able to identify Megatron because she'll be the brown one. Check out this possible surf. He's not listening at all. Uh, he's not, because he's just come up with something clever, look. Oh. So predictable. Oh, yes, that was, that was very clever. It didn't work though. Well, now we should just kill it, just as consolation. It's dead. Skuro did some photography and upper and lower slaughter ones. You get all the prime jobs, Skuro. I know, Bob. And his little face. That's that's like when you tell Megatron that Christmas is cancelled because you've got Champ Ladder games. Norton says it's the lack of listening that led to the Asian fatherhood. I'm not quite sure what he meant, but I'm, I'm slightly afeard that there's some casual racism thrown in there. Though I haven't exactly pinpointed where, but it sounds dangerous. Marsham says, for the, benef for the benefit of all the Scottish lads, pronounce the following town. Milngavi. Milngavi. Well, that turn went about as badly as it could have done. Oh no, no, we forgot to put the ball as well. Of course we did. Fuck's sake. So, could have had a serve, could have deleted his best player, got nothing. Fuck's sake. <sighs> oh, we KO someone, did we? Oh. <clears throat> yeah, all right. This game started off like it was all going to be fine, and suddenly not so much, eh? Is it still um, all right? <clears throat> um, it should be okay. It, what has happened um, is we started off like a train killing stuff, um, and then the killing just completely stopped. Is this why Virgin Trains lost that contract, the East Coast Main Line? Because of that. An analogy that you started off like a train killing people. <laughs> it's not good PR, is it? We apologise for the delay to the 445 to Doncaster. This is on account of having killed several people exiting King's Cross. What if you get the wrong kind of um, suicidal people on the line? would be a oh, like replacement like the service or something like that. Eh? Mm. Uh oh. He's in a boink. Keys off. He'll regen. No, he won't. Oops. Well, he's safe. He got regen. No. Can't be why I didn't regen then. But he's a yet um yet he's an regen, doesn't he? Look a bit like a troll. Not a troll. You do seem to be fading away somewhat, Andy. <laughs> ah, we're fine. 
Is, is this because of the rise of the Eye of Sauron that you're eventually fading away and will then take a long boat journey into the, you know, undying lands of the West? Is that roughly what's going on here? Quite possibly. Um, I, don't, I don't actually know what's going on, why that's the case. Well, Guyon says, did you know military rations include chewing gum with a mild laxative? Um, believe that. Minorton says, if you adhere to the 45 mile an hour speed limit on a stretch of Route 66 in New Mexico, the Rhodes Rumble Strip will play a rendition of America the Beautiful. What happens if you go faster? Does it not play the same tune but a little bit quicker? Well, I would think it would be to do with harmonic resonance, wouldn't it? You see, this is a perfect example why the tiny bit of knowledge is a very dangerous thing. You're the kind of person who's like at a bomb disposal site. You're there screaming, it's cut the blue wire. No, no, trust me, cut the blue wire, because you've seen an episode of 24. I have, actually. Poor Track says, are you still playing against these CDs? Oh, I got hauled up about that the other day. Um, the MP3s now, mate. It's all, it's all streaming and um, little files. Glad I was able to help you out. Don't get caught out like I did. <laughs> and if you're not sure, they're called OCDs. <laughs> Helgen, good night, old Bane. We should be streaming on Tuesday, I believe. Not certain, but I think so. tight 2-1 when it should have been 2-0 at the half, done. T asks, what did the DJ Priest say at confession? I don't know, T. What did the DJ Priest say at confession? <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have synthed. Bit of a stretch, that one, T, but good effort. <laughs> oh, oh, C, D, C. They just play the songs three times each just to be sure. <laughs> you don't like my jokes, but OCDC is okay, is it? That was pretty funny. Kiramasaka says the most popular souvenir in Sweden is the commonly seen moose crossing warning sign. <laughs> Along roads in Sweden, Swedes have to replace thousands of these traffic signs each year as tourists rip them off and take them out with them. <laughs> I'd like I'd like one of those that in certain cafes and restaurants like warning Sustroming zone. You know, there's like a sort of a, a an airtight room where people go for that. Send a quick scout around to see where the ball is. you I think you'll still be alright here, wouldn't you? Right. Probably. Probably. Potrack asks, have I ever had Sustroming? No, but we've talked enough about it, Potrack, that I'm pretty convinced I don't ever want to. I find it quite an interesting topic, but there's not a lot of redeeming um, features that I've heard about it. 
I think the last one that really sealed it was watching the YouTube video of, of two blokes, one with a ghost pepper chili and the other with a tin of surstroming. And the lad trying to eat the ghost pepper chili got on better. The one with the surstroming couldn't stop being sick, and that's only after it peeled the lid back an inch. He didn't actually taste the bloody stuff. The trick is to drink lots of vodka, says Kittens. But on the same basis, like, just go and eat rocks or just eat, like, moss or something. Like, at least it doesn't make you sick before you've even eaten it. Like, it, I just don't get it. S sorry, what are you talking about? Sir Strumming, why? why? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I really like Bombay Duck. Uh, the point, I'm just going to call this out. The point of uh, apothecating that KO there uh, was that he had a simple 4 plus for a 1 dice. Now he can't. He's got 4 plus. Well, he got 5 plus, 4 plus. Um, back in the days where I, I used to have input to the list super, massaging it on the back of that kind of generosity would absolutely happen. In these modern times, what? where the list is, um, oh, I'm so lucky. where the list is, um, that was l uh, unlucky. Four plus, three plus, two plus, five plus, was no reroll. Still be alright. Um, I'm still answering Super's question. Um, so no, pro probably not, unfortunately. Oh, Kano, hello, Kano, how are you doing? Kano says sure strumming. Every YouTube video where someone fails to eat it, opens it the bloody thing the wrong way, you open it underwater, so it's, it smells bad. I'd heard that, though this, this lad was opening it inside a plastic bag with an uh, a, um, you know, elastic band around his wrist. Um, Rusto did, Rouse did um, jump the list, but only because I remembered. So d don't count on me remembering stuff. Not if Rex isn't here. Be be fair. If um, if you have done something particularly notable, give, give us a nudge next time um, we're doing a by a player. And I am entirely corruptible. So that, that would work. I mean, th th there's all sorts of things that are based on fish that, you know, a lot of people don't like, like kippers. I quite enjoy kippers. Bombay duck, excellent food, excellent. It's it's just the rancid bit, because we, we, when I was a kid, we, we used to have a, a boat. We'd, we'd go um, sailing, and you'd have the um, the smell from the fish key. It was really pretty bad. And that was relatively fresh fish. Fermented shark. I don't like sharks at all. They're, I think sharks are a little bit unsettling. I'll tell you what, mate, you're fighting back here. Um, I've had haggis tea. Haggis, for me, is very much like um, black pudding. As long as you don't dwell on what it's actually made of, it's fine. But if you then really think through what you're eating, then you maybe pause and go, oh. Boink. Got one. Got another one. Got all of them. Oh, yes. It's the pig's bladder bit, Ali, that put me off. Yeah, exactly, Kano. Most, most of the stuff people used to eat, like, I mean, tongue. My be this is this is a bull's bull's tongue. My my mum used to like tongue sandwiches, and I thought tongue that's quite a nice word. And then she actually pointed out it is actually the tongue out of a bull, and it was like oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're having a sandwich, and it's basically like sort of French kissing a minotaur. Mm, <laughs> no. But then you know who doesn't enjoy kebabs, right? And what's Donna kebab made of? Does not bear thinking about Donna mostly. 
No. What is Dynamite? Is it the mixture of meat of everything else? <laughs> no. No, no. It's, it's, it's lamb, but it's minced up lamb, and rumour has it largely mechanically recovered lamb. So basically, you, you get a sheep, give it a haircut, whack it in the blender, and Bob's your uncle. Gurian recommends pink slime. Well, there was a lot of rumours flying around that Andy was the green Teletubby. You know, early career, slow start, all that. And they used to eat pink slime. I mean, they said custard, but I mean, what's the difference? Go on, get another one. Oh, didn't break armor. Have another go. Just gonna have another go anyway. Didn't break armor. That goblin's dynamite. I don't know, though. Can I, I take your point if we're going to kill animals to eat them? But then, you know, you look at a steak and think, ooh, steak smashing. But then you look at the sort of disembodied hour, eye of a cow and don't think, mm, yummy. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? We do need to throw an apple at that goblin phase, or at least save it for him. Where did I have kimchi? Kimchi's Japanese, right? Or am I completely off base there? My best mate Steve had some kimchi. We tried that. It it wasn't. Um, that's right. He he was dribbling on about can I get him some kimchi because there's a place in Leicester that sells it. And it's like, well, Steve, go on the bloody internet and just buy some man. He went, no, no, it's not the same. It's got to be from this place. So they go and wander about town as it's some obscure delicatessen. That's it, it, that's right. It is. It's um, spicy cabbage. It was it was all right. It's okay. It's all right. Brilliant. It's all right. Oh, Toronto's on fire, look. What, like Portugal? Shit. But then, spicy cabbage isn't something that people go, Ugh. you know, it, it, it's not sort of like, you know, donkey anus or something like that. At least says is Will Grid is Will Grig still on fire? Who's Will Grig? Alan? <laughs> I've got I know who Will Grig is. Uh, Will Grig is a Northern Ireland footballer um, who um, his song was um, uh, like Kings of Leon, "Sex on Fire." Uh, they called it Will Grig's on Fire. I don't quite know why, but um, that was the thing. Oh, right, okay. That's a very good reference, Ali Rada. Tell you what, you know when you've got your browser set to be um, Bing because Windows, and, you, and you've got as number one favourite Google. I can see why because I've just opened the browser to see who Will Greg was, and Bing tells me news you may be interested in: Britney Spears steals the show at Brighton Pride. I don't care. Oh, now this one's a bit more interesting. Just one man owns 3.7% of all Aston Martin Lagondas built between 1976 and 1990. What a shit fact. Fun activities to keep your kids entertained this summer. This is one for you, Andy. 
Isn't it just one of them, like, just gag them? I'm going to say entertained. It keeps them quiet, at least, doesn't it? Uh, Gillard has posed the question on everyone's lips that's yet to be answered. Why is Andy become ethereal? Did you pop that curtain ring on that you found down the back of the sofa again, mate? Is that what you're doing? Um, I am actually wearing a ring, which I don't normally wear. On which finger? <laughs> Have you something you want to tell them? And why wasn't I invited? I mean, surely, surely, when you get married, who's going to be best man? And don't say fucking Tim. <laughs> who, who, who do you know who's probably going to write the best speech ever for you? Where is Duderino, actually? Fine. I don't know. I haven't considered it. I haven't thought about it. Like I've thought about stuff like that. Uh, right. Sorry, sorry. sorry, I'll just text David. We'll sort it all out. Okay. Uh, 61 blocks succeeded. 29 blocks succeeded. Um, armor rolls. He rolled four armor rolls out of 29 arm, uh, blocks. I rolled 25 armor breaks. Um, I'm Batman. I'm Batman criticizes your meaningless sentiment. If I wish this game would have been different, the outcome would have been different. You've not been watching this show much before, have you, I'm Batman? Because. This is the sort of quality punditry that we come out with, mate. Just roll with it. It's easier. Oh, that's what he said to us. Well, yeah, spe specifically to you. Just let's let's be clear on this. Well. And I mean that in a lovely way. It's with fondness that I give you this feedback. In fact, I'll pop that in your file at work. Hey. 